Let's prepare on springs. In this chapter, we are going to study about the springs, the load that is acted, or the twist and the deflection that is happening in the springs. So everything we'll be seeing in this chapter. So spring is what means it is a device for storing up the energy in the form of a resilience. Okay, so it is just a storage of energy element. And here there are three types of springs. One is the torsion spring where only torsion acts and it is example is closed helical spring and bending spring means only the bending acts. So it is a uh, plate or leaf spring is an example and the third one is the combined. So both the torsion and bending will be acting here. So an example is open coiled helical spring. Okay. So here uh, we'll be studying the values for this closed coil spring. So first due to the axial pull that is only when the axial pull is uh, loaded there in the spring so what are the things happening in that spring so that values we'll be studying so first one is the maximum shear stress so it is 16 wr by pi d cube so you'll be uh, similar formula i'll be studying in the torsion chapter also that is tau max will be equal to 16 t by pi d cube no so that t that torsion is only here it's given as w into r due to the axial load here and then the spring index so it is denoted as m which is equal to 2 r by d so here this r is nothing but it is the radius of the coil and d is the diameter of the circular wire or rod which is actually twisted as a spring okay so normally the spring will be like this no so this distance no so this half distance is only it is called as r okay and this single lines diameter only we call it as the d so this is the difference between r and d and then twist so twist is the twist of that spring so which is denoted as theta which is equal to 64 w r square n by g d power 4 so here w is the uh, weight that is the load axial load applied and r is nothing but it's the radius we saw already n is the number of the coils so how much coils it is having and g is the rigidity modulus of that material so what material we are using for that spring and d we saw it's the radius of that wire okay and here this formula is important uh, because the questions may be asked like this so uh, whether the theta is directly proportional to d or the theta is directly proportional to r like that they'll be asking or when the radius of the coil increases and uh, how what does the difference happen in the theta and with the power also okay so theta is inversely proportional to d here okay so it is d power 4 so it's four times proportional so when it increases it decreases four times so like that also they'll be asking okay so based on this formula any uh, with any element they'll be asking a question and the next is the deflection so it is uh, delta so which is equal to 64 w r cube n by g into d power 4 so it is similar to the twist formula only only it is multiplied with r so it becomes r cube here okay and the next is the stiffness so stiffness is nothing but it is load divided by the deflection only so the formula is the load divided by the deflection formula so that is only here return here in the reverse so w and w will get, will get cancelled so it is g d power 4 by 64 n r cube so this is all about the axial load when it is applied in the springs okay then the next one is the axial couple so when the axial couple a moment is applied okay so at that time the twist and stiffness is important here so here the st uh, twist formula is given as 128 m so that is the uh, couple that is acting r n by e d power 4 so all other factors we know here we are not using g we are using e of that that is the Young's modulus of rigidity of that material okay and then the torsional stiffness so it is m by 5 so there we saw it's w by del no so similarly only here it's m by 5 so here what they have done is uh, this this whole value you know so if you return if you write like this that's m by 5 means you'll be getting the answer like this that is e into d power 4 by 128 
r into n okay so this is the value you will be getting okay so here what they have done is we know that i is equal to pi into d power 4 by 64 no so they have substituted here okay that is only the difference here and i has come here okay so we know that pi d power 4 by 64 so it is 2 times 64 you'll be getting 128 and uh, pi also they are including here so instead of this d power 4 and by 128 they have written here as e by i by 2 pi okay so that is the difference so that only the formula has become as e i by 2 pi nr so which is also uh, denoted as t by phi also you can denote like that also okay and then the springs in series and springs in parallel so this problems will be asked in the questions okay uh, like when the two uh, springs are connected parallel so what is the deflection happening in one spring like that at all they'll be asking so we have to know about that okay so when the spring is connected in series so when they are connected in series the load applied will be same in all the springs okay so we we cannot calculate the uh, load there that is we cannot take the summation of the loads there but the deflection is not like that okay so deflection will be differing in each uh, springs okay so we can take it as the whole deflection is equal to the deflection one plus deflection two so it is based on how many springs we are having okay and the deflection is further uh, it can be written as w by k that is the load by stiffness so w by k is equal to w by k1 plus w by k2 here only the load the w only is the same across the springs when it is connected in series okay and you can write like this also 1 by k is equal to 1 by k1 plus 1 by k2 like that so with respect to uh, these formulas you can find the values of the uh, stiffness and the deflections of each springs okay and the next is the springs in parallel so we can also call it as the coaxial so when the question if they gave it as coaxially connected spring means you should take it as the parallelly connected springs okay so when the springs are connected in parallel then the load applied won't be same but the deflection will be same okay because it is connected in parallel okay so here the load will be equal to the summation of all the loads in each spring and the stiffness will be equal to k1 plus k2 like that okay so that is the difference between this springs connected in series and parallel and keep watching for the next lecture on theories of failure